What's up everybody and welcome back to the ATU Dynasty. Now today we're going to try to knock out the offseason and the last portion of the regular season. We're out of it. We went 0-12. It's embarrassing. But we're done. So we have to check out who wins the national championship, who wins the Heisman, who wins some awards and stuff like that. We're going to check out my man's stats because I believe he's over 2,000 yards receiving as a true freshman, which is straight gangster. Hopefully he doesn't leave us. Now first things first, we have our four-star d tackle. Russ Poe, he's 6'3", 289 pounds. He's from California. He is going to be probably our starting guy because our defense line is pretty suspect at best. Man, check out his um, attributes, if you will. He ran a 5-1. He, he has A-plus field awareness, or A field awareness, excuse me. He also bench pressed 470, squat 670. Potential is poor. Not really worried about that. And his discipline is excellent. That means we should have no off-the-field issues with this young man. So as you guys you guys can see Chris Leak, aka Jamie Young, senior quarterback for the Florida Gators. He won the Heisman with 48 TDs, 3,868 yards. You can see that M Hart, that's Mike Hart from Michigan. I got him in there for a real name. That's really it though from outside of the pack. Ten. But that's gonna do it for the Heisman. So we only had one guy who had a real chance of getting a award, and that of course was my man Coley. You check out his numbers. 115 receptions for 2,009 yards, 14 TDs, 39 carries for 248 yards. And you can see right there by the store that he is a first team All-American. Let's go. So we have the quarterback from SAU. And we have, of course, Mike Hart up in there. We also have Marshawn Lynch. We have this guy from Oregon who was tearing us up as well. And then we have Coley representing Alaska Tech. As a first team All American. So we have a new Michigan record. You see that Mike Hart broke the record for TDs with 24 of them. The previous record was from halfback 19 from 1968. Don't know if that's real or not, but congratulations to Mike Hart. So I'm not going to take you guys through all of the bowl games, but we are going to look at just the top ones. The Capital One Bowl, South Carolina ends up losing to Michigan 55-28. A little bit of re revenge for the maize and blue for what Jadavion Clowney did them in the Capital One Bowl in real life. Rose Bowl, you had UCLA taking on NC State, UCLA 33, and the NC State 27. Then you had the Sugar Bowl in the Nebraska 35 over Pittsburgh who only put up 10 and then Oklahoma and Florida State they duked it out in the Orange Bowl and you have Florida State dropping that one by 3 31 to 28 is the final and then the national championship game which was the Fiesta Bowl you had Iowa playing Florida and Florida gets to win 46 to 30 and then we will just for fun check out what San Antonio did if I can find San Antonio this San Antonio make it. Did I pass him? Boom, right there. Sucks for them. Look at that. <laughs> Sucks for them. They had to play freaking Maryland. I don't know what it is, man, about this game, but they just hate independent teams, man. But SAU, they win their ball game 35-6. to They were the number four team in the country. It looks like they did lose one game, but it was not here. All right, so we're going to kick off recruiting. We are going to bump this up a little bit more. We want to keep training where it is i believe we're gonna bump this down to 25 we're gonna bump training down to about 30 and we're gonna bump recruiting up to 45 now we did have some off the field issues with our starting quarterback but if we had some if we were deeper you know on the bench it probably wouldn't have, have hurt us so much but because we're playing with 50 overalls and stuff like that i think it's more important to have great talent on the field and maybe not you know, the smartest guys off the field, if that makes sense. So now sense. it's time to look at the people who are leaving. And as you can see, we had a lot of low overalls that graduated, though, because we are an academic program. You know what I mean? Davis, he's a big name. He's leaving. Uh, Coker, he actually played pretty well. Got a couple of picks this season um, for INT, is actually. But good riddance. I hope you guys have a nice, safe trip. Uh, my man Davis, he actually played pretty well for us as well. He's up out of here too. We're going to check out some other schools. Alright, there's one school that I really want to check out and that is Cal. Because I'm hoping to see Marshawn Lynch on here so we do not have to face him again. But it looks like he is staying for another year. 
unbelievable. Marshawn Lynch is not going to go pro. He's going to stay for another year. You saw that he was a first-team All-American as well. He is going to be a handful. Uh, as you check out USC, you see that this offensive lineman, he's going to go pro. I believe Lindo White's graduating this year. Yeah, Lindo White's right there. I don't see John David Booty on here, so we're going to face him another year. That means we have another year to wait before we face Mark And then Sanders. you said like they actually had the best old lineman throughout the whole country. He is going pro, thank goodness. He is going pro as well, thank goodness. And I believe Maurice Jones-Drew graduated. Yeah, right there. He has graduated. So hopefully UCLA won't be so tough. So before we start recruiting, we have some transfers that want to play for our school because most likely they're not getting any playing time at their school. We have this halfback from Arizona. Now, we haven't played Arizona yet in this franchise or this dynasty, excuse me. I'm hoping that we do because they seem to suck each and every year. Might help us to get our first Pac-10 win. Anyways, man, he's a halfback. I'm going to accept him. Middle linebacker, you know, middle, middle linebacker has been a huge issue. We're going to accept him as well. And strong safety. Even though we do have a recruit coming in, these guys will all have to wait one season before we can play with these guys. But we need as many bodies on this team as we can have. So I'm going to accept all of those guys. So I want to play this smart. So we're only going to go after guys who are interested in us. You see that the interest level is pretty freaking high with all these guys. I don't really want to waste time. I know these guys are only two-star recruits, most of them, and stuff like that. But I don't want to waste time and points on trying to go after a bigger name when we do have a couple of recruits that have already signed. We have a couple of five-star recruits and a four-star four recruit. Excuse me. We still have Coley, obviously. So I'm going to try my best to get some good guys. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm really going to focus on the guys who really want to come to Alaska Tech and not guys that are just out of our budget, if you will. Because, you know, these guys, you know, pay to play, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Anyways, man, I'm going I'm to do some recruiting. I'll get back to you all. Well, this has got to be one of the weirdest recruiting classes ever. We got two five-star recruits, and then we got a four-star recruit, and then we got um, this outside linebacker, and then we got this defensive end, and then we got this athlete, and that's it. We only signed six guys. <laughs> the life of an 0-12 program. So man. Mike ended up going to Air Force, the tight end I was going after. This halfback that I wanted ended up going to UNLV. Then we lost this defensive end. We're going to see him every year because he's up in Oregon. We lost this tight end. It's bad, man. It's really bad. We lost another center to Oregon. It's really pathetic, our recruiting class right Top now. Top class goes to Florida, Michigan, LSU, San Antonio, Ohio State, Texas, A&M, UCLA, Colorado. Let's go see where we are. Of course, not going to be anywhere in the top 25. We don't even sign like six guys. Oh, we got we got close, top 50. Top 50 class with six scholarships in total. We are going to be thin beyond belief, man. That is crazy. Crazy, crazy, So we crazy. have Chris Alexander, our athlete. It's time to pick what position he's going to be. If I put him at halfback, he's 65 overall. If I put him at receiver, he's 70 overall. And his current position at athlete is 70 overall. So if I put him to safety... Strong safety, he's 72 overall. Free safety, he's 76 overall. Corner, he's 74. So I think it's a safe bet that we should put this kid at free safety. So Kirby Gilmore has moved up from 70 to 74 overall. Has 72 speed and his throw power. Uh, I believe it got better. It's now at 84 and 82. And if he gets hurt or suspended again, we're going to be in trouble because everybody else can't pass past five yards anyways brooks has 86 speed now you see f miles that's frank miles he is 80 overall with 87 speed i can't touch him right now but when i can not pause i didn't mean like that don't anyways moving on coley he's 82 overall with 87 speed vincent's still here with 80 speed as well then we got my man look those two tight ends not signing, it hurts big time because we only have one tight end on the roster. If he gets hurt, we're going to have to put like a linebacker or an offensive lineman out there, which is going to suck. Uh, our offensive line situation, 
Still pretty bad. We have a 62 left tackle. That's not good. We also have a left guard at 62 overall. That's not good. Our center is 56 overall. That's not good. Right guard, though, my man Graves, he is 80 overall. And we also have Ross. He is 70 overall. So we might look to move him to a different position, whichever one he is the highest at on the O-line. We're going to stick him there. Uh, might, might, might be right guard, Ross. Who knows? Left in. That's our freshman. Not the best, 62 overall, but as of right now, he's the best we got. Right in at 48 overall. Again, it's ugly. That's all I can say, man. Maybe we'll put an outside linebacker at right end. Then my man Green, I believe he transferred from he transferred last year. So we have one year with him. He's 80 overall. Poe, he was our four-star recruit. He's 74 overall. So again, already an upgrade there. Outside linebacker Newsom was with the squad last year. He's 62 overall now. We might move one of these guys over because as you can see on the bottom of the screen, we have Thomas, Winston, and Holland. These guys are higher overall than him right now. So we might whenever we use a three linebacker set and we're trying to stop the run, I might go, I might go with those three guys as my three base outside and inside linebackers. Then of course we got Holland. He's 78 or 78 overall. Actually, I take that back. I can't use Thomas because Thomas he just transferred. So we're gonna have to wait to use him, which sucks. But anyways, Winston 60 76 overall, excuse me, run stopper outside linebacker. He should be a beast with 82 speed. And then of course our cornerback situation is pretty solid. The most talented group by far on the team is our cornerback and then of course our free safety you see that we got my man right here alexander he is our starting free safety you might see my man uh mac mead he even though he's only 52 overall he did play pretty well for us and he is our impact player but most likely that will disappear before the year is over and then of course we got lance gimson i'm gonna change his number i don't want him to wear 46 i'm gonna change his number before the season starts he's 80 overall with 88 speed he was our athlete and then we got the kicker situation and our punters both basically terrible. So let's go get our schedule, y'all. So here goes our schedule to kick things off. We have Kansas week two. Then we, are, we then we have Army at home. Then we're at Ohio. Then Oregon State, Oregon. And you see those little locks? That means I cannot change that. This is the way it's going to be. Then we have number 25, USC. Then we're at Arizona State. Then we have Buffalo coming to town. Then we're at number four, UCLA. Then we have Arizona coming to town. This is our first time versus Arizona. They have been the worst team in the Pac-10 besides us. So hopefully that could be our first Pac-10 victory. Then we have Stanford at Washington. And then that's going to wrap up the season. So... That's going to do it, man. I hope you guys are looking forward to this season. I'm going to work on the season as soon as I'm done with this episode right here. I'm going to make sure I change people's numbers, for how I want them to, you know, what number I want them to wear and how I want them to look as far as equipment is concerned. I guess because we're here, we can check out the top 25 polls just, 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 just real quick. Oklahoma, Tennessee, Nebraska, UCLA, Florida, San Jose, San Jose, San Antonio, excuse me, Iowa. Then you also got LSU, Florida State, Ohio State. State, Georgia Tech, Michigan, NC State, South Carolina, Texas A&M, Georgia, Michigan State, Virginia Tech, Miami, Auburn, Illinois, Penn State, Wisconsin, Missouri, USC, and let's see where we are ranked. Top 70, no. Top 80, no. Top 100, no. We are 116. This is going to be a very tough year yet again. Hope you guys are looking forward to it. Hope you guys... We'll be along for another ride of ATU. Hope the rest of your day is the best of your day. Peace. Hot sauce.